everyone, welcome back to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. So grab a brush, grab some paints, grab a model, and paint along, because that's what Painting with Jay is all about. Once again, mix and match, miscellaneous march. Today I'll be working on a Signar Warjack that I figured I might want to use at Adepticon, so I figured I might as well paint them up. Uh, I don't have a lot of time left before I leave. Obviously this is being pre-filmed because when this video airs, it's going to be Adepticon and I'm going to be in Chicago. But that's okay, so let's paint along and let's uh, get started on our Lancer Warjack. Hey everyone, so here is the Warjack. I just finished assembling him and I've now, uh, oops, and I've now just, uh, basically all I did was quickly hit him with an airbrush, a few colors of blue, and then a quick varnish. And uh, now it's time to bring him to life, basically. As I said, he's a Lancer, so he's not worth that many points, but he works really well with a few models that I'll be bringing. I don't think I'll be doing a tournament. Maybe I'll make a, a change of mind, last, a, a change of, a last minute change of mind or something. But um, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna go and have some fun and film and vlog and meet people and hang out with people and just have a great time. That's what I'm gonna do. I don't think I want to do tournaments, because I'm not a really big tournament player. Nothing against tournaments. If you are a tournament player, my hat's off to you. Uh, my biggest problem right now is my back is still nowhere near 100%. I'm taking back relaxers and painkillers and all that fun jazz. and I can't do that. I can't stand for a whole tournament and... Um, and do that. So I don't think that will be the option anyway. And second, I just don't have the competitive, maybe not drive or something, maybe in the models, I don't even know. Like I probably could put together a quasi good uh, list for War Machine, maybe, but I wouldn't really know how to fight a lot of the other competitive lists and um, most of the things involve multiple lists, and I just didn't know how I'd pull that one off because I do have multiple warcasters, and I'm bringing multiple warcasters, but I'm not bringing multiple guys really of uh, like multiple squads of guys and stuff. I only have really one. No, I'm bringing two squads of infantry. So we'll see. You know, I'm bringing my scorn army as well. I only have 35 points, so there's that. And uh, what else? Yeah, and then for my 40k, I'm bringing Grey Knights, which will be really fun. Um, yeah, they're going to be fun. So, I'm bringing a couple thousand points of Grey Knights, and I'll bring a bunch of lists. You know, just uh, five, maybe three or four different lists, various lists, and I'll make, try to fill in a bunch of battle So that means that a lot of the battle reports over the next couple weeks are going to be uh, Grey Knights, obviously. Grey Knights versus something. If they, if I'm able to film, I really hope there's open gaming. I'm told that there will be, and that will be really good. If not, I'm going to just play a lot of War Machine, and yeah, I prefer to play some 40k with people. You know, I have a lot of, I have some people wanting to meet me and, and do some battle reports, so you know that'll be really good. Um, that'll be good. As I said, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. The drive is going to be a bit painful because. Driving 11 hours with back pains is not going to be my cup of tea, but I'll put up with it. You know, I'll take some painkillers ahead of time. I am driving. Uh, it's my car, I guess, that we're vlogging in. Cool. I got a GoPro, so I will be... Uh, actually, like, I'm going to hopefully record some of the driving and stuff, which will be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm excited. I am just stupidly excited. Today's Monday. Really, in real world. Today's Monday. Um, but I'm filming this, of course, um, you know, because I said I'll be in, Ve in not Vegas, Chicago, or Schaumburg, or wherever it is, on Thursday. But really, my journey kind of begins tomorrow. So um, I'm leaving tomorrow night. I just got to get this adhered to the There we go. I'm leaving tomorrow night. I'm going to be staying with my in laws. Um, tomorrow night because that way I don't need to make the 11 hour drive straight my in-laws live about an hour away from the border so that will if I can it'll put in about three and a half hours tomorrow night so it cuts the trip down to about seven hours so a third of the trip is already done tomorrow and that'll be that'll be good 
that way I can get that out of the way. And then, um, yeah, and then just focus on the remaining two thirds the next day. You know, that's going to be really good. Uh, what else? I got to apologize. I haven't, I've been trying to make videos but, uh, lately, but uh, the back pains and the fact that I'm going away meant I had to, to basically to get off the days for uh, Adepticon. I needed to work extra last week, and so I wasn't able to get as much filming in because I was too busy working. So I, yeah, I just couldn't film um, as much as I wanted to. But obviously this week you will have a new uh, Miniature Painting 101 on Monday. You know, it's already uploaded today, and it's, it's literally processing as we speak, um, or as I speak to you. Uh, there's already a miniature painting one up. Uh, there will be a battle report up on t t Tuesday. Once again, I've already uploaded it and I've scheduled it for tomorrow. Um, Wednesday, there will probably won't be anything. I haven't been able to get many hours in for filming. Uh, the one series that has kind of fallen for the last few weeks is How to Play 40K, and it will get back. Probably next week there'll be a new episode. Um, it's just it's a hard series to film. It's, it's really hard. It's probably my hardest series to film overall because I have to be really creative to film it. And it takes multiple takes usually. And it's just, uh, it's not the easiest to film. You know, it's not like a straight battle report where I can set up, play a battle report. I know exactly what I'm doing, how to film it, go, succeed, edit, good. Um, but it is... Oh, I gotta talk about the battle report score. It doesn't matter. Um, it's a hard one to film, so I'll be getting back to it. Also in the battle report, obviously, I filmed this one and the last one with my wife back-to-back -back days, and I made the same mistake, so obviously people are going to get mad at that because I apparently got a couple wrong rules wrong about the wounds on the destroyers and possibly the armor save of the scarabs, I think. So I'm going to make that mistake again. And that happens sometimes. It's the problem with filming ahead of time is that if you make a mistake, you carry that mistake over until it's corrected, right? And sometimes it takes a while. That's the thing with Mini Wargaming. When I used to work there, we'd film battle reports a month in advance. So if you we made a mistake, we could film like five battle reports before the first mistake is caught. And people would be upset. So it happens, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. So there, you know, just want to talk about that, obviously. But it's a, it was a fun battle report to film. It was against uh, David Watson. Or David. I think his name was. So against David, um, it was cool against, uh, it was Ultramarines technically, he, was, he had a, pretty much a, it was Dark Angel painted, but it was a good, it was an Ultramarines army, and it was good, it was a fun game, I really like playing against David. Occasionally our games are a little one-sided, um, I've won, and he's won both of us with uh, a little bit lopsided, but it just happens sometimes, you know, we both play multiple armies, we both play um, for fun. And uh, I really like playing against him. So, I gladly play against him any day of the week. Same with Stu, or you know Doug, or any of these guys. Any, everyone I've played so far in, in Peterborough, I've really enjoyed playing against. Yeah. What else? This week's painting tutorial in the warp is a Caronted, I believe his name is? Caronted, Caronted, uh, from Infinity. I'll show you him. Here he is. Sorry, my own. Really cool looking model, terribly weighted, because it falls forward so easily. I've had to wait out the back. But uh, there he is. And I've used a lot of airbrush paints on him, but using him painted by hand, and it was a lot of fun to paint him. Nice ghost tints on him. I'm trying to use ghost tints, incorporate ghost tints more into my painting um, for them. It's been a lot of fun using ghost tints, so. I found you can do some really cool effects with them. Ghost tints are a candy coat paint. Uh, they're ever ready candy coat paints from uh, Minotaur, or Badger, but they're from the Minotaur range, right? Um, what else happened? I went and saw my family. I, I see my family usually three times a year, or maybe four times, three or four times a year. Usually it's my niece and nephew's birthdays. We all get together. Um, 
And then my niece and nephew's birthdays, um, Christmas, and occasionally Thanksgiving. So that was good. I caught up with them. You know, everyone's doing okay still. It's, it's always interesting because people, my family really doesn't have much of a comprehension of what I film or what I do for a living. And I'm okay with that. They really aren't, you know, to be, they're interested in the fact that I'm, I'm a YouTuber and I'm trying to make a living on YouTube, but they really don't have an interest in the content itself. You know, they've watched my, they, they watched my Las Vegas vlogs, for example, and they, they watch those things, but they don't really, don't really know about 40k and they're not really interested in it. You know, it's, it's okay. And I respect that, obviously. So it's, it's weird because they, it's, when they talk, ask me about my work, it's really odd questions. But I, I'm used to it. I'm based, I'm kind of the black sheep of the family. Many of us are, who I find in this niche. But uh, I'm the black sheep, you know, and uh, I'm used to it. This guy's gonna be really cool when he's done. Can't wait to use him. And I just made a mistake, but it's okay. He's not gonna be painted to the highest standard. He's basically gonna be my tabletop because he is a war machine model. And I know, I shouldn't say that. That's kind of rude, what I'm saying. But uh, war machine models aren't typically painted to the highest standard because war machine players really don't like to paint their models. And I. I really don't have a problem saying that because you go to a tournament and you, or watch War Machine battle reports and it's like, um, it kind of annoyed me, which I get, I understand the point a little bit, but on Adepticon's website, Adepticon, the, uh, the people have rules saying that models, to play at Adepticon, your models have to be painted, right? Which is why I'm painting up this guy right now. They have to be not only assembled, they have to be painted. They have to be painted and they have to be completely painted, not like three color minimum. They have to be painted to a complete standard. Right, so if I looked at that model, I would have been like, oh, that's a fully painted model. It has to be the best paint job, right? It's tabletop, but it has to be painted. And that fact alone really angered a lot of War Machine players this year. Like, there was a forum just blasting uh, the, the guys in charge at Adepticon for making, for enforcing a paint standard in War Machine games. And they were like, well, I'm not painting my models, so I'm not going to come to your, I'm not coming to Adepticon anymore. I'm going to pull my ticket, and I'm not coming. And I guess that, you know, and I get, I don't know, some people are really big on their rights, and they, you know, they're, they don't want their rights infringed upon, they want the right to play with unpainted models. But you know what, in a 40k setting, it's really weird, because like in a 40k tournament, almost 99% of the time for 40k tournaments, the models have to be painted, at least to a three color minimum. And I've never, ever encountered unpainted armies in a 40k tournament. And if so, usually the people are like, ah, oh, I'm playing unpainted, I don't care anyway, but, um, you know, I don't judge or anything. It's just, it's just odd that people are not only like, oh my goodness, I have to paint, but they're really, really mad about it. Because they're used to just buying a model and throwing it on the tabletop or something, and I don't know. I'm just, it, I know that War Machine is a kind of a win-at-all-cost game, and it kind of bugs me that... Many, not all, obviously there's some fantastic painters in War Machine and Hordes, and I've seen some really nice armies. But on the whole, people don't paint their armies in War Machine or Hordes, and if they do, they only do it out of necessity. They, they do it because they have to do it. They don't like doing it a lot of the time. And I said, this isn't everyone. It really isn't everyone, as I said. But uh, a lot of the players, a very large chunk of them. They're too busy strategizing, I guess. But, uh, I don't know. I would never get upset by forced to paint my models, but I'm also a model painter. I love painting models. I love, I, you know, this is what keeps me going. I love painting the models. It brings them to life. It makes me want to play with them. You know, that's kind of the it. I just couldn't imagine playing with. I do. I, I've done battle reports with unpainted models before, but it's just models that are in progress, right? That I've been trying to paint all along. And now that the, you know, So, yeah, it's just really interesting to me I don't know, that people would just choose not to come and get, like, rage quitting over it. 
Probably because I'm also an easier going through, but I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I'm excited. I am just, I've been counting down the days for Adepticon for a long time. And I know I went to uh, Gen Con, not Gen Con, uh, Las Vegas Open, which Las Vegas Open was great too. But I was more interested in Las Vegas itself and hanging out with people at the convention as well. But it wasn't as, like, it, it wasn't a convention that I knew I would be um, doing a lot at. You know, I knew I was not going to be playing, right? I knew I was not going to be uh, doing anything other than walk around and blogging. My, that was my experience, you know, I wasn't playing, and this time I'm bringing armies, I'm going to be having fun games with people. Um, it's going to be a different, a definitely a different feel. And this year, I really, as I said, I kind of spoiled myself, and I really wanted to spoil myself. I bought a VIG, and I'm buying a VIG next year if possible again. The swag bag alone. I'm going to do a video just on the swag bag. Because apparently the VIG swag bags are insane. You know, this year. Um, and I don't mind buying those swag bags. Because originally my idea alone was just swag bags, get you in the stores earlier. And it's a way of supporting the convention. You pay more, so they get more money from you for doing nothing really, right? Because they just, you know, there's very little things that actually affect the convention that they do you know they let you in the stores earlier which is cool um and it doesn't not, no skin off their back really so it, it's really just money in their pocket so it's a really great way to support the convention and that's what i was thinking about like i really like this convention i had a great talk last year with the president of the convention and i want to support the convention just in um hmm Yeah, I wanted to support the convention a little more. So I figured, all right, I'll throw more money at them. And, and you know, but it, it turns out that the swag bag this year is fantastic. And I've decided I'm going to volunteer. Uh, they put out a notice the other day saying that they're looking for volunteers. And because I'm staying that extra night, I'm going to actually spend a few hours of my time Sunday. Now, I couldn't do this for Wednesday because I won't get there when they needed you. You know, they asked if you, if you to volunteer for Wednesday, you needed to be there like uh, earlier in the day, right, to set up and stuff. But I couldn't do that because I'm going to spend Wednesday driving. And I think, by the way, for Q&J this week, I think I'm going to do a Q&J from, if, as long as the internet's decent, um, I'm going to try to do a and j from uh, Chicago. I think that'd be really fun to just take an hour out of my time at Adepticon and do a and j for y'all. That'd be kind of cool. So... Cool, he's almost done for the metallics. Yeah, um, what was I saying? I don't remember. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna volunteer. And I uh, volunteer to take stuff down, not carry anything heavy, because I can't really lift that much right now. I'm pretty broken. But I will help anywhere they need me, basically. That's my goal. You know, anywhere they need me, I will go help as long as it doesn't involve that much heavy lifting and it's cool and the pri like I would I'd do it for free I'd really do it for free but they give a little bonus an incentive to help out and if you do help out you get to register next year early so that's cool next year I'll register a little early a week before everyone else and I'll make sure I get my VAG again to help support the com you know it's just cool it's really nice to support the conventions that you want to go to and to make sure they keep going and succeeding so I'm, I'm really happy with that. And the VIG was not very expensive for Adepticon, relative to like Gen Con. Gen Con, I tried to get VIG as well without knowing how much it was. But uh, Adepticon VIG was about 100 I think. I think it was like 80 It was like about 100 bucks I think. Uh, but Gen Con VIG is $600. Like, it's really power. Like, really, wow. Crazy. But I think that's it. Cool. Look at him. He's... Oh, well, I'm, going to, I'm, just, I'm just going to a tabletop standard. And this hour, uh, it's only been 20 minutes so far, but this hour is going to take up most of my painting time for him. I'm going to paint him up a little bit tomorrow. And over like the... I'm only going to spend a couple hours on him total, probably. And then he is done. Because 
I unfortunately just don't have a lot of time to uh, deal with him before Adepticon. As I said, I'm leaving tomorrow night. Um, I'm going to start the journey tomorrow night around probably around 7 o'clock, which will put me in my in-law's house around 11. And then I can just relax uh, and go to bed. And then I'm meeting Owen. thing is, Owen, um, you know, you guys probably remember formerly Mini Wargamer, Owen. Him and I don't live anywhere near each other anymore, right? Because he lives near Mini Wargaming and I live in, in Peterborough. So the problem is neither of us are meet, neither of us are on each other's way to Chicago, right? He his way to Chicago is is drive basically past Hamilton, which is my old where I used to film for Black Knight Games, right? And so is my method. So we figured we'll meet somewhere on the way, and luckily my in laws is on the way. It's it's perfectly on the way between us. So for him it's three hour, it's two hours into his journey. And it's three and a half hours into my journey. We basically intersect. We're like the perfect point of intersect of intercept intersection intersection between us is London, Ontario, and that's where my in-laws live. So I'll be there. That's what we figured is perfect. So that way um, we don't waste each other's time. We're both you know heading to Chicago, and we meet there, and then we'll take my car because my car is a little more trustworthy at the moment. Knock on wood. And. Uh, yeah. So then he can stash my, his car there. It's all good. So that way there's, there's no time lost, no driving lost. And that way, when we're on the way back, we can meet back. We'll, we'll stop in London once again. And then we will um, go our separate ways. And he'll go back to St. Catharines, and I'll go back to Peterborough. I might stay a couple extra hours to see my in-laws and stuff, but uh, we'll see. So it's going to be a bit of a journey because it's a, an eleven-hour drive from Chicago to uh, Peterborough, and we lose an hour on the way back because uh, it's Chicago's an hour behind us. So it's really like a twelve-hour journey. So if we leave at eight a.m. I won't be home until 8 p.m. under perfect road conditions and very little time at the border. So. What I do really love about War Machine models, especially the Jacks, is that they're really easy to paint. You know, I've spent probably so far 25 minutes on this guy, including drying time. And he, there's only like, these models are barely three colors, or like, they're, they're not barely three colors, they will be more than three colors, but still, you know, they're not going to be the most crazy detailed. And uh, it's all good, you know, I'm going to do gold, silver, and blue, but there's already like three shades of blue on this guy from the airbrush, and there will be, you know, highlighted up silver, and then I'm going to use... Um, wait, sorry, some gold, my favorite, uh, liquid gold from Vallejo, and then, uh, he, and then I'm going to use, what, some red for the eyes, maybe some arcane blue for his arcane node right here, and that's him, you know, it's not a very hard model to paint, but that's okay, because he's only like a five point war jack. He's not very expensive. Just gonna get some more non-oil. I don't know. I do like war machines sometimes. It's just it's not my go-to game. You know, I prefer 40k personally. Um, probably because I'm not big into list tailoring, and that's a huge component of War Machine, is that you have to think perfectly, you have to really, really think, especially if you're going to play in a tournament. Like, I know what goes in Owen's mind. Owen goes, okay, I better have a list that can deal with this, I better have a list that can deal with this, I have to have a list that can deal with this, go. And he makes his list. So he essentially list tailors to three different metas, or three different uh, popular ideas. So like, 
he left the Liz Taylor to a, a Hordes faction, like a Horde, if it's a Hordes army, or if it's a War Machine army, or if it's this kind of guy, and then he plays, right? And if he tailored well, he played, and he plays well, he can win. Oh, shoot, I forgot this. Ooh. And I just don't do that. I put a list together and I have fun. And that's what separates me. And I'm not better, in fact, that means I'm a worse War Machine player. Because to be a solid War Machine player, you really have to tailor. You have to play competitively. If you want to win a tournament, for example. And I won't ever win a tournament unless I really get my game together and paint uh, and play and also put together a large um, a large army of guys because I'll need a, a large chunk to decide between for my army. Okay. And of course, the thing is with Signar, and this really bugs me, it's kind of a pet peeve of mine personally, is that if you're a Signar player and you want to play competitively, you throw in as many Merc models, mercenary models as you can, because they count as in faction for most of them. But I'm not a, a mercenary fan, I'm a Signar fan. I love the look of Signar, I love the feel of Signar. I don't want to field, you know, a bunch of Merc models. And I see what the top players, like uh, Jay Larson, will, um, sorry, I'm shaking gold right now, will play and it's just like, okay, so my list is Signar, and it has a Signar Warcaster, and it has a Signar, basically here's like a competitive Signar list. Um, e. Haley, right, Signar Warcaster, really good Signar Warcaster. E. Haley, you pick a really strong Warjack, um, a Stormwall, um, right, one of the giant Colossals. And then you, uh, Journeyman, Squire, maybe Arlen Strangeways or something, maybe. Uh, maybe Gun Mages or Black 13th, probably Black 13th. And then fill the rest of your list with Mercenaries. And then that is like your Signar list. Right? It'll be very, very little actual Signar in your Signar army list. And it just, I don't know, it's not really my cup of tea. I want to play Signar. I'd play Signar. You know, it's like, it's kind of like, imagine if you want to play an army, and then you end up playing all Space Marines or something. And I don't mind Space Marines, obviously, but um, if I play a faction for anything in 40k, you know, there might be allies, but usually it's to play that army. It's not, you know play a bunch of mercs but that's to each his own it's just my opinion and uh but that's not my favorite aspect of of war machine usually right now i would wait until the wash is dried and then dry brush it but i just don't have the time today so uh i'm gonna keep going Yeah, and a couple times I've been telling people, like, I'm a Signar player. And they're like, oh, you mean a Mercs player? I'm like, no, I'm not play Signar. I don't, uh, I don't just play Mercs. I have, like, two Mercenary models, and I don't even use them. But, uh, maybe I should. You know, there's just a lot of really good Mercenary models out there. And if you can count them as in faction, the problem is Mercenaries have a lot of weak casters. So you fix the problems by playing Signar, and then, uh... You play a Signar to get a really solid caster and a great warjack. And then you just fill the rest with mercenaries. It's like, okay. Hmm. I think it's odd, but it's okay. Just my opinion. Um, what else? Yeah. That is it. It's a good game. I just, I'm not a win at all cost player. And that is the mentality of most, not all, but many 
war machine players. It's to prove how good you are and kick your opponent's butt. You know, very rarely does the word fun come into the equation. But many of the players, they're like, well, winning is fun. I say, okay, so winning is fun. Does that mean when you lose, you don't have fun? Because to me, when I'm playing 40k, whether or not I win or I lose, I'm having fun. I'm having a great time. I could be getting my butt handed to me, but as long as my opponent is a good guy or a good girl, you know, nice person, um, I'm having a great time. It doesn't matter to me about the win. I would rather, personally, I like close games because close games for battle reports are the best and most entertaining. You know, if it's a blowout game, which occasionally does happen, it just doesn't, it's not as entertaining, I find. What else? That's okay. That's just the difference. You know, no game is better or worse. I just, it's everyone's preference. You know, which game do you like? Do you like War Machine? Do you like Hordes? Do you like Infinity? Do you like 40k? Fantasy? Uh, the new Fantasy guys, I guess, are coming out. The Corn guys. They look pretty cool. I like them. Man, the, the End of Times models are amazing. I love the End of Times models. Anything with the End of Times so far has been the End Times? End, end of Times? End Times. I think it's called the End Times. Sorry. Their models are amazing. It really... If I was curious about... Fantasy at the time, I would totally jump into fantasy, except what holds me off is the fact that apparently something is on the horizon, and it's going to be a drastic, like, the rumors are, as I said, a huge drastic change, and if that's the case, you know, I might as well wait and see what's going to happen with the game. Before uh, deciding what I want to do. Another thing that Hordes is actually doing very well. I really like the new um, armies in a box that they're doing. Like they're all in one armies, and they're actually like they're really good. They're solid lists, and it gets people into War Machine quicker. It comes with rulebook. You know, they're actually really good ideas. Same with Hordes. They did the same thing with Hordes, obviously. And there's a new set of of um, Colossals and Gargantuans coming up this year. So that's gonna be pretty big, because Car Colossals and Gargantuans are huge in the in the meta. Depending on which army you play, but uh, if you are a Signar player, or a Retribution player, or um, Menoth, or Convergence, you really play with a lot of Gargantua or Colossals, you know, because those Colossals are pretty strong. Look at him, he's already starting to really come to life. He is... I said he's not the hardest model to paint. And uh, like this alone, this standard right here, I could paint the eyes and the staff, you know, of his um, his spear. And that sh alone should be, this is basically tournament level for, you know, minimum requirement of tournament level for uh, War Machine Hordes. So it's not too bad. I said it's not, it doesn't take long at all to get to this level. I guess it's just one model, and it's it's an easier model to paint up, right? He's not too complicated. Uh, many parts of the legs. You know what? I'll paint a part of the feet. That way, it adds another color to the feet. Once again, I'm gonna hang out with the WGC people at Adepticon. It'll be fun. Uh, I hope Chung goes. And uh, Austin should be there this time, so I can bug Brush for Hire. That'll be good. Maybe I'll just do an overbrush instead of a dry brush. I lose the texture, but uh, it'll keep it much cleaner. 
Cool. So the wash isn't even dry. I'm done the next color. That's okay. Sure, that's done here. Look at all the spots. War Machine. Yeah, as I said, it's a good game. They do seem to be very much, uh, the Private Press people really do seem to connect well to their fan base, which is good. I respect that. Paint those parts maybe metallic, yeah. You know what? Add some more metallic. Why not? Again, this may not be the most amazingly painted model, but it'll be good. I'm, I'm pr uh, it'll be a quick job, but in the end, he'll look good. He'll he'll play well. The reason why I'm making him is uh, because I'm doing. I'm going to bring E Haley. I don't usually play with E Haley, but. Um, as I said, I want to just get a feel of some of the more competitive lists. Just to have fun and uh, try new casters and stuff. And I don't play with E. Haley. I've never actually played with her. She's painted up. She was a warp tutorial a long time ago. And uh, so she's done. And I figured she goes really well with Lancers. Lancers and Thorn, the character Lancer. Are really where she goes really well with because she has uh, offensive spells that don't have short distance, and you want to keep her a little bit back. She's not a caster you move up quickly with. So, hiccups now. Well, oh, shoot, I probably should put the paint back. Yeah, I have a lot of extra paint, so I'm gonna put it back in the container for the gold. Uh, so the next couple minutes are just going to be me shoveling paint back into my tray for a sec while I talk. Or I put it back in the paint pot. Don't like to waste paint, especially with the alcohol-based paints. They're a bit more expensive. I don't like to waste paint in general. But you don't want to put an alcohol-based paint on a wet palette, for example. So that's good. Um, yeah. So besides the back paint, as I said, I'm on painkiller still, but life's pretty good. I'm just excited. I'm I can't wait. And then there's gonna be a bit of a lull. Uh, well, I shouldn't even say that. There's gonna be some people coming down to play with me the week later, so that I'm really looking forward to as well, including Cody Rue. Uh, he's a really good guy, and every time I've played against him, I've had just the best time. So that was, you know, he's such a good guy. He's such a positive attitude, and he's an orc player. And he loves orcs, and I just, yeah. As I said, there's there's certain people. I would. I just. I look. I stupidly look forward to, not stupidly, but I'm saying, I'm stupidly excited about playing against, and he's one of them. And his son, uh, John, is a really good kid, and he uh, he's really into the game too now. And he plays uh, Space Wolves, so hopefully I'll play a game against him as well. He's a really good kid, I, I'm looking forward to playing against him as well. But just people like Cody Rue, their, their attitudes really make them... Uh, the. T you know, there's such a positive attitude. It makes them stand out to me as, as someone I really want to play against because their attitude gels really well with mine. Um, they play for fun. They have a great time. And it's about the fun and, and the camaraderie and, you know, meeting the other person and getting to know your fellow war gamer. So just got to get my painting. Sorry, I'm stepping from the camera. But, uh, you know, that's... So I'm really looking forward to that. And there might be other people coming too. I don't know. And as I said, I'm probably going to head down to Mini Wargaming sometime at the end of the month to... I don't think I'll be playing much, but just to have fun and chill with them and stuff too. So, it's going to be a busy month. It really is. So right now I'm just going to take a quick paint job and uh, paint the staff. My favorite color that I use in pretty much every tutorial, gray liner. Adds another color. So already we're at three colors, but in the end it'll be about five. And that's cool. When I'm, I'm painting a model like to tabletop, a strict tabletop standard like this one, 
the goal is don't stop. Don't take your hand off the brush and off the model. You know, once you lay a shading or a wash, whatever you call them, uh, keep going. You know, as I said, the, the shade has been drying since, like, it's still drying. You can see wet spots here and here and on the back here. But uh, don't stop. Just keep painting as, long, as much as you can. Areas that just don't touch. Apparently the power's fading right now. Hmm. As you can kind of see. So if power goes out, night fighting. Look at that. Another color. Done that. Okay. Now let's paint the eyes while they're work, you know, painting. So let's get some reds. Red. This one hour, I'm gonna have this model done basically, other than uh, the base, because uh, it probably won't be dried. This model wasn't even assembled, or it was base, not even, it was half assembled uh, an hour ago. You know, now it's definitely a tournament ready. And I know, not again, not the nicest paint job, but it's definitely going to meet the standards, and that's good. I do find, though, my painting, I feel, personally, has really improved. Oh, by the way, I'm going to be entering a model into the crystal brush. Now, it's not, it's it's my attempt at a decent paint job. But in my mind, it is nothing compared to the awesomeness which I've seen in, in previous competitions. But I want to try. I really just want to try because you can't do anything until you try. And I'll probably get some awesome feedback, hopefully, uh, from the community and, you know, what to improve upon. And it's, 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 you can't only enter if you want to, you want to win, but you can't win every time. You know, sometimes you got to, it's got to be a learning experience. And that's what I want to do. It's not about winning. It's about learning, having an awesome time and trying, you know, I'm not the, the greatest painter in the world, but, uh, I'm not bad. And I think it'd be cool to enter, as I said, you know, and if I, got lucky and I placed, even if I just placed, even top five in a category would make my year. It really would. I would love that. Because, you know, it's just a cool, I'm just looking for the paint, oh, there it is. Um, it's just really, it would be really cool. But obviously there's some really stiff competition, and uh, but I get a free entry because I'm a VIG. VIG. Every time I say VIG, I think I should be like rapping. Notorious VIG. Coils now. Arcane blue. There we go. I'll just quickly add some white to this arcane blue and then do a quick overbrush, make it a little bit of a glow. And uh, look at them. I'm, I love these painting with J's. I love them because you just sit down and you start on a model and look at that. End of the, the session and I have an almost painted Lancer. I have not had a Lancer yet. You know, I've been playing War Machine for a couple years now, and I don't have a Lancer. So now, after an hour, and it just shows you, really, it, it removes the 
the inhibitions that so much you can do in an hour or just at some time that you sit down and dedicate to painting. Again, he's not the craziest high standard, but it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. Ooh. Let me just fix that one. But he is, you know, he's going to be tabletop ready. And he is going to be... Pretty cool. Maybe I'll use him with some battle reports. We'll see. I definitely want to film some War Machine battle reports. So maybe a couple of War Machines amongst some 40Ks. Because the Warp, they really like War Machine. And, uh... You know what, maybe I'll take some of the remaining, um, I'm going to take some of the remaining, where's my dry brush, there it is, uh, gray liner that I was using earlier, and I'm going to use it to dry brush a quick uh, chimney smoke effect on his chimney. And little things like this, it, it quickly differentiates the, um, the level, you know, like if you add a, like a little effect, like chimney soot, for example. It shows that you're going slightly above the, the tabletop level, when you're really not. It's, well, you are technically, but you know what I'm saying. It just adds a little effect, but it goes it goes really far. These little effects, they add up, and uh, they just, they add a quick level change to your model. You know? Look at that. So now he's a little chimney smoke effect. Good. Good stuff. And I can finish up now with a quick overbrush of uh, of some of a mid-tone silver. Like uh, quick, not quick silver. I use cold steel. Do a quick overbrush of certain areas with it. And then I'm basically done. I can paint the base of the model. And uh, I got an answer. No, nothing wrong with that. Brush. Don't want to erase the chimney effect. And how'd I get that orange there? That's odd. Hmm. Guess I'll have to clean that up. The great thing with, with um, painting the metallic last is that it just you can use this kind of cleanup step to um, to fix any if you went over the metallics a couple times, which I did quickly. You know, I just uh, with like the gold and stuff cleans it up. Good. So I better just use a little bit more paint, metallic paint, the uh, sort of liquid gold paint, and paint out. Uh, is touch that up. I don't know how that. There we go. That orange got there. One hour later. Maybe I should change this series to one hour paint job. We'll see. Uh, all right. I have still ten more minutes. Let's work on the base. Good symbol. Working on the base.
So a quick black base coat. What else? Um, so I've been carefully considering between us, and I know this is going to not be the most popular thing that I'm about to say, but I'll just talk about it anyway. So I've been getting a lot of feedback. I've, people have been emailing me galore. Like I've gotten well over 15, 16 emails in the last week, because last week I mentioned Patreon. And I mentioned about, I don't know what to do with Patreon in combination with the Warp, because I already have a paid channel, and it feels weird asking for money in multiple places. Not really asking, you know, people can donate multiple places. But there is a good chunk of people that just don't want to subscribe to the Warp because they find it, you know, maybe too expensive or they just, you know, they have no time to watch the videos in the Warp or something. And they want to contribute, they said. I've gotten a bunch of people asking me. So, if people want to, I might as well. And um, I'm going to come up with an idea. I've been thinking of a couple ideas and I'm going to bring them up probably in the next couple of weeks. I'll make a video of it and talk about it. But uh, a tip jar... People I know, I know people who do use a tip jar on, on Patreon, like if you know, just, you don't get any, any significant perks from it, maybe, uh, but you help and that's what matters. And if I got enough tips, I could actually quit my job. Like there's, it's getting to the point now where I'm, I'm not almost there and I'm not like a week or two or a month or two away from quitting my job, but it's, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and I can see it. And if I get enough support from Patreon and the Warp in the near future, I can quit my other job. And when that happens, the content is just going to be overflowing because I work really hard as it is, but now with no other work to do, it will not take, like, it's going to be so easy to produce a lot of videos. There we go. He looks pretty good. Tabletop, quick standard. I'll let that dry. But yeah, as I said, I'm going to do something. And I have a couple ideas um, on how people, you know, so all those people out there for, and I know a lot of you watch this video because it was in response to this video that a lot of people contacted me. So those people out there, I have a couple ideas and I'm going to be bringing it up, as I said, in the very near future. And um, yeah. So, it's, uh, it's coming, some ideas that I have, you know, it's, it's coming, and uh, I hope you are okay with it. Now, to those, and as I said, I said this is my last week's video, and I'll say it again a million times over, I'm not walking around with my hand out, as the expression says, or something, whatever it says, you know, uh, I'm not. If you do not want to contribute financially, watch my videos, and that's all. That's all I ask. You know, I'm not demanding people support me financially if they don't want to. I'm not going to ever not make free content. You know, I'm not, this is not a get-rich-quick scheme. I'm not that type of guy. Anybody who knows me knows that, and I'm never going to be that type of guy. I promise. So, um, I'm just trying to do this for a living, and that's it. And I'll be happy, you know. It, so, it's not about uh, getting rich. It's not about, you know, I just want to do this for a living. That's what I'm saying. So, that's it. And if you never want to contribute, no problem. Just watch my videos, like them, subscribe, and contribute, like, to the videos. Leave comments. That's all I ask, because that's awesome enough. You people, I am so, I consider myself so extremely spoiled by my uh, viewers and my community. My subscribers are the greatest people in the world to me, and I, I cannot, maybe it's the painkillers talking, but I cannot thank you enough. I'm getting kind of emotional right now, and uh, yeah, it's just, 
It's true. I can't thank you enough, and I don't ever... That's what feels weird about talking about money, but uh, as I said, if you want to just watch my videos, I will be... That's awesome enough. That is awesome. Now I'm just going to put... I'm putting together a guy right now, because uh, I'm going to take the last few minutes and, and assemble an orc that I've been wanting to build for a while, because uh, I'm still talking to you guys and girls. But that's it. And if people just... They want... The reason why I'm doing this is because people want to do it. And if it if people want to do that, and they want to support me more, awesome. If they if you don't, no problem at all. I'm not upset. I'm not demanding it. I'm not, you know, this guy's walking around with his hand out, and I've added a little green stuff to just kind of simulate a little bit of blood kind of movement. And uh, hopefully that turns out nicely. I tried to groove it to make it look like pulling. Where is it? Blood on him. So there, you can see it there. So. But uh, it's such a great kit, this orc. Pain boy. That's it. I don't want to... If Yeah. That's what I love about YouTube, is that it's a free medium, and I can reach a lot of people that don't want to pay because it's free. And that's awesome. Like, that, that makes... It's so cool, you know, that I don't necessarily sell a product to the free people, and you can just watch my videos. If you watch ads, awesome. If you don't watch ads, no problem at all. You know, ad blockers... It happens. I'm fully aware of that. And if you add block, I'm not mad at you at all. Watch my videos, engage in them, have a great time, and I really hope you like them. And that's what the spirit, you know, that's what I'm about. But it would be amazing. On the same note, it would be amazing. It would make my life to be able to just do this for a living. And maybe it's a little greedy to ask, but look at him. He's done. Maybe he'll meet next week's painting with Jay. What a fantastic model, the pain boy. So, excuse me, oops, he fell over. So that's it. I should probably end it here. We're at 56 minutes. Uh, I got the model done. And uh, I'm going to go and continue packing up for Adepticon because uh, I still have to do that and I have to edit some more videos. And uh, yeah, but life's good. That concludes this week's Painting with Jay. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it, painted along, had a good time. As I said, right now, I'm actually in Chicago, so I'm an hour behind, but it's all good. But yeah. So, thank you very much for watching this week's Painting with Jay. And now I have a fully painted, I just got a base him. Signar, uh, Lancer. So, he'll be fun to try out next, uh, probably today or tomorrow at uh, Depticon. It'll be good. So as always, thank you very much for watching. And most importantly, thank you for subscribing, for watching my videos, and for supporting me. Uh, any way you do. It really does mean a lot. I am so spoiled by you all, and I'll never forget that. I really will not. Uh, no matter how many subscribers I get, I, I consider myself the luckiest person ever. So thank you very much. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Painting along got work done. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.